Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, pro physique athlete. Today we're going to be talking about barbell training for hypertrophy. How good is it? You'll see that a lot of people say that barbell movements are necessary in your program. A lot of people swear by these movements and have had good success with them. You'll also see that barbell movements feature heavily in a lot of my free templated programs on YouTube. But how good are barbell movements really for hypertrophy? We're going to talk about the pros and the cons of heavy barbell training for muscle growth. This will be in relation to the squat, bench, and deadlift, but also other major accessory movements using barbells like overhead presses and barbell rows. After the general pros and cons, we'll talk about some of the specific movements and tips and tricks for each of them. Okay, let's start off with some of the advantages of heavy barbell movements for muscle growth. First of all, these movements are very high stimulus. Especially for people who are short on time, you really want to be choosing exercises that are a high stimulus for hypertrophy. In other words, these give you a lot of bang for your buck, and the fact that they are compound movements also makes them more time efficient because you're just involving more muscle mass. Next, barbell movements are excellent for overload. After sustainability and consistency, progressive overload is the most important factor for hypertrophy. Now there are two main elements you want to think about in terms of choosing exercises that are good for overload. First of all is how much weight you're going to be able to load the exercise with. And you want to be able to add weight in a safe and consistent way. So for example, there are some machines you might be using where you would actually max out the cable stack at a certain point. The other component of overload though, is how precisely you're actually able to add that weight. And calisthenics are a good example of how this can be an issue in terms of hypertrophy. If you wanted to build up a big chest just using push-ups and no weight added, you could initially increase your stimulus by just adding reps. But eventually even that would get too easy and you'd want to increase the resistance. You could try adding an incline to your push-ups, but eventually you'd have to make the jump to one-arm push-ups. And this is a very big jump to make. However, in a bench press, you can add weight in five pound increments or even less if you have microplates. This gives you a much more smooth rate of progress and allows you to capture those gains along the way. My recommendation for overload is that you aim for a rate of progress that is as fast as possible, but in a sustainable manner. That is, you wanna be able to keep progressing over months. If you try and progress too quickly, you will run into a stall and this will plateau your gains. The other thing about barbell movements is that you have minimal equipment required. This is especially nice for people who train at home, train in small gyms, or who travel a lot. You'll see that even cheap commercial gyms and small boutique gyms will have a rack, bench, and plates. And it's important to set up your training in a way that allows you to be consistent. And this point is actually a big reason why I include barbell movements in so many of my programs. Even though there might be other movement variations that would also work, I want to make my programs as accessible as possible to all of you guys. So keep in mind when you're looking at my free programs on YouTube that these have been designed with the general public in mind, and I want to make things as accessible as possible. The next big pro of barbell movements for hypertrophy is that they're great for strength development, and this has a few sub points. First of all, you have some carryover from strength to hypertrophy. There has been quite a bit of debate as to whether more strength equals more hypertrophy. This is not completely true, but there is some validity to it. The idea is that if you train yourself to get stronger, you'll be able to lift more weight and thus apply more mechanical tension to your muscle through each of your sets. Especially if you look at volume from the perspective of sets times reps times weight lifted, if you're able to lift more weight for more reps, you'll be able to produce more productive volume. Next, barbell movements are going to be great if you have powerlifting goals. If you want to lift heavy weights with a squat, bench, and deadlift, you will have to use variations of these quite a bit. So if you actually want to compete in a powerlifting meet one day, or if you just have strength goals, it's nice to know that you can build both strength and hypertrophy with the same movements. Finally, being able to build strength can be very motivating for people. I find this very much myself where it's really motivating to see the numbers go up. And this is one reason why a lot of bodybuilders will use some powerlifting type training throughout their off season. Having goals is really important for success in the long run. And it's really nice if you can find something to help keep you motivated. Now that we've talked about the advantages, let's talk about the disadvantages of barbell training for hypertrophy. First of all, a lot of people will end up getting married to the movement. And by that, I mean that they just use the same movement over and over again and never change things up. You'll see that people end up tying their egos to their squat, bench, and deadlift numbers. And a lot of people will feel that their barbell movements are necessary for muscle growth. There are some issues for this. First of all, from a hypertrophy standpoint, if you only use barbell movements, you are going to have a lack of variation in your programming. Barbell movements are great for producing a lot of stimulus, but as you'll see from some of the examples later, not all the movements will stimulate all of your muscle fibers. So if you want to have complete muscle development, you will want to include other exercises. Next, if you try and have squat, bench, and deadlift in your program year round for years on end, you are going to run into staleness. Now there is a psychological and physiological component to this. 
this. First of all, it can get boring having the same exercise in all the time, and switching things up can be refreshing and exciting. But part of producing a good stimulus for hypertrophy does involve some novelty, and I don't mean muscle confusion, so I do not recommend switching up your exercises every workout. But if barbell bench press has been your main chest movement for years on end, you might be better served by switching things over to say a dumbbell bench press, which would give your body a new stimulus and allow it to adapt to that. Typically when we're talking about injuries with barbell movements, a lot of these happen due to bad technique. But even with good technique, if you're always using the exact same movement patterns, you do run the risk of chronic overuse injuries. Having good technique is really, really important. And if you're just starting out, it might be helpful to get someone to show you how to perform these movements properly. You really want to get your technique down before going heavy. Next, at a high level, barbell movements become highly fatiguing. This is more of an issue for exercise that produce axial loading. That is, compressive forces on your spine produced by squats, deadlifts, and heavy barbell rows. But at a high level, when you're able to move a lot of weight on these movements, you will produce a disproportionate amount of fatigue. For example, if you're consistently squatting over 400 pounds, you are going to produce a lot of fatigue from those squats. And since your body has a finite amount of recovery resources, this will reduce the total amount of productive volume you're able to generate across your workout or across the week. If you're really fatigued from your heavy squatting, you might not be able to do as much leg press work or other exercises in general after that. So at a high level, you will see that fatigue does become an issue. And in my advanced programs, you'll see that I use less heavy barbell training. Finally, with barbell movements, you have constrained biomechanics. This means that these movements just might not fit very well for some people. So if you find that a certain exercise doesn't groove for you very well, first of all, check your technique. But after that, you'll find that some movements just aren't ideal for you and you'll have to try this out for yourself. Okay, now for the part you guys have been waiting for, we're gonna talk about some of the specific examples of barbell exercises, some of the specific pros and cons and tips for hypertrophy. First of all, the squat. This is an amazing movement for the quads and for the glutes. In terms of stimulus, front squats are gonna be more quad dominant, and then you've got high bar and low bar squats, which are gonna be more hip dominant. In general, when looking at exercises, if you're able to move more weight with a variation, you're more likely to be generating more fatigue. So it follows that low bar squats are gonna be your most fatiguing variation of squats, with front squats being less fatiguing. Now a note about squats that they're great quad builders, but they aren't the best exercise for your rectus femoris. Now in terms of a technique tip, I recommend that you try and go as low as possible when squatting for hypertrophy. Getting that full range of motion will produce a better stimulus, although I'd recommend you stop before the butt wink at the bottom. If you watch yourself from the side in a mirror or film yourself, you'll notice that if you squat all the way down as far as possible, you will start your lower back starting to round at the bottom. This may not be an issue if you're lifting light weights, but as things become very heavy, you do run the risk of injuries with this. Next, let's talk about the bench press. I think the bench press is an amazing exercise for the chest. It allows you to get a good stretch on the chest and really overload. Plus, the pecs tend to be relatively fast twitch, so they do well with heavy barbell training. Really aim to set up your bench well with your upper body, so engage your lats when you're pressing, and make sure you have a strong base of support, so have your feet firmly planted on the ground. None of that feet up benching stuff. If you want to train your core, just do dedicated core exercises. Now in terms of the deadlift, this one's a bit more controversial and I have to say that the deadlift is not quite as good as the squat and bench press from a pure hypertrophy standpoint. First of all, a lot of people will deadlift in a very concentric focused manner and the deadlift inherently gives you an isometric contraction for your back. So it's not the best direct back exercise. I'd recommend that you really try and control your eccentric if your goal is hypertrophy. Still, I do think the deadlift is a useful movement for hypertrophy just because of its sheer overloadability. The fact that you're just able to generate so much stimulus is a good argument for using it. Now, at a high level, deadlifts will become prohibitively fatiguing. These are probably the most fatiguing exercise in the hypertrophy world that I include in my programs. So if you find that you're absolutely trashed after your deadlift session and you're kind of wobbling through the rest of your workout, it might be time to start thinking about using other exercise variations. In terms of conventional versus sumo, sumo deadlifts tend to be more hip dominant and thus will use your legs and glutes more. I like to see deadlifts as more of a lower body movement, so I personally like sumo deadlifts, but I recommend using the variation that grooves well for you and that allows you to feel strong. Okay, let's talk about some accessories now. So first of all, overhead press. You'll see people talk about this as one of the big main movements. People will actually debate as to whether overhead pressing is strictly necessary for muscle growth. And in a strict sense, it probably actually isn't really necessary for hypertrophy since you can build your pecs and anterior delts really well with horizontal pressing. 
But I do think overhead pressing is useful for compound training involving your anterior delts, triceps, and upper pecs. You'll see though that I only typically include overhead pressing once per week. Most people have overdeveloped anterior delts anyways, so I don't think you'd need very much extra pressing. Next, we have close grip bench press, and this is probably my favorite tricep movement. From a technique standpoint, I recommend really trying to keep your elbows tucked to really focus on your triceps, and for a grip standpoint, you really just need about shoulder width. I used to try gripping the bar even closer to really focus more on the triceps, but a lot of people will end up getting wrist issues with this. To briefly touch on other barbell variations, I think incline bench pressing is awesome for the chest as well, and it will help you build your upper chest. I personally don't think that most people really need a lot of decline pressing, just because the upper chest tends to be what lags for most people, and your lower pecs get trained really well with bench press and dip type movements. Going on to rows, barbell rows are a tricky one from a technique standpoint. This is one of the movements people mess up the most. First of all, I want you to try and keep your lower back more parallel to the ground. At the most, you should be at about a 45 degree angle. If your torso is more upright, you're not gonna be getting a good back stimulus. Next, really try to minimize cheating with the movement, that is swinging the weight up, and you really wanna control the eccentric on the way down. You need to check your ego at the door with these and make sure you're getting a good stretch in your back rather than just trying to swing around a lot of weight. You'll see people talk a lot about pendley rows, which are where you touch the weight to the bottom on the ground. These actually aren't my favorite for hypertrophy since you lose tension at the bottom, and some people will start using some deadlift momentum to get the weight up. Next, Romanian deadlifts or RDLs. These are my favorite overall hamstring movement. They're great because you get a huge stretch in your hamstrings at the bottom. Make sure that you push your hips back as you're lowering the weight. You don't want your knees to bend too much because you want all the force to be going through your hamstrings and glutes. Now the thing about RDLs is you don't have to go all the way down to the ground. As long as you lower the weight enough to feel a good stretch in your hamstrings, you're good. From a pure efficiency standpoint, RDLs are actually probably a better pick for hypertrophy than deadlifts themselves. So if you are an advanced athlete and you find that deadlifts from the ground are becoming prohibitively fatiguing, you could try making RDLs your main pulling movement. All right, a couple more here. Barbell hip thrusts are a glute dominant movement. I actually really like this as a hip hinge in general. Keep in mind here that a lot of people will cheat their range of motion by not truly locking out their hips at the top. So really try and lock out at the top and get a good range of motion to get a bit of a stretch at the bottom for a maximum stimulus. If glutes are main focus for you, then I do think you should always have some type of thrusting movement in your program. However, if glutes are not a main priority for you, hip thrusts are still a great choice, but you just might not have them in your program all the time. Lastly, curls and skull crushers. So you can do arm movements with the barbell, and I think these can be solid movements for hypertrophy, but note that this is one of the disadvantages where your wrists are fixed to the bar. So some people will get wrist issues from these. If there's a movement that causes you pain, don't be hero and just scrap it and use a different variation. Now, when it comes to barbell training, a lot of people will ask about the utility of pyramid versus reverse pyramid sets. Check out this video where I talk more about this and really go into depth about how you can actually program your sets for hypertrophy and strength. For more top-notch science-based hypertrophy information, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.